there should be another point along the x-axis, maybe somewhere over here, where I'm closer to this one again, right? And the potential, this potential is able to match the potential of that. So unlike the electric field question, in the electric field question, there's only one answer, right? Here there is uh, two answers where the potential is uh, zero. How do we get this other one? The, the math didn't give it to us. You're going to have to do something clever to the math to get that other answer. See, the, if, the, if my x is less than a 4, the, I'm going to have to take the absolute value of uh, this one, right? This distance. So uh, I have to say over here, absolute value of x minus 4. So I'm going to switch it, call it 4 minus x, right? So to get the other answer, I'm going to do 2 over 4 minus x equals 5 over x plus 3. And then you, know, you can cross multiply 2x plus 6 equals 20 minus 5x. And you get 7x equals uh, 14. And x equals 2. Let's see if that makes sense here. 2. Yeah, it's closer to this than that. Is there any other point? Can I go on this side? No, this one will beat that if I go closer to that, right? Since it's a bigger charge. So there's no other point. There's only two points along the x-axis. As a matter of fact, remember I talked about equal potential surfaces the other day? This and this are part of an ellipse. It's part of an ellipse, right? And the foci of that ellipse uh, is uh, 0.2 millicoulombs. So you could actually find the general equation of that ellipse. The potential is zero at that, at that point. Now, as we get closer to this, what's going to happen? As the equal potentials get closer, like over here, it's going to be, let's say, uh, it's going to be one volt. And over here, it's going to be two volts. You know. I don't know if it's going to be, but I'm just saying it's going to get higher volts, right? And then as you go that way, what's going to happen? You're going to have ellipses like that, right? And what's going to happen there? You're going to get more negative, right? So there's going to be no other place where the potential is zero, OK? The potential is zero only along the, this ellipse. So if I uh, want to answer the second part of that question, where on the x-axis or the y-axis is the potential zero? There should be no place on the y-axis. There should be no place here. There should be no place along the y-axis where it's zero. Because no, no, no point on the y-axis can lie on that ellipse. You see? Now, the other way of saying why it can't happen is because no matter where I am along the y-axis, this distance is going to be greater, um, smaller than this distance, right? Since, since uh, any point on the y-axis is going to be closer to the, to the point 5, the point 2 is not going to have a chance to even match it. You see? So this is never going to be able to beat the, it's never going to be able to equal to, to this since this distance is greater than this distance. So uh, no point along the y-axis is going to be closer. Now how about if uh, the charges were reversed? 
then it's a different story. What if I had like this? Let's say I had negative uh, 0.5, or uh, let's say like this. Let's hit plus 0.5 millicoulomb, and then I had uh, uh, negative 0.2 millicoulomb. What if the charges were uh, same position but reversed? The, that one was 0.5, and this one was negative 0.2. Then my answers would be closer to this guy, right? Right? So then it would be, the answer would be maybe two points along here. Maybe it would be something like this. Uh, oh, it would probably be two meters from here, right? Uh, two meters. Yeah, it will be two meters from here. It will be like this. It will look like this. Yeah, it will be two meters to the right of this. And then uh, about six meters to the left of this, so the potential would be zero on that point. So again, no point along the y-axis would have a potential of zero. Unless this one was closer. Let's say you had something like this. Let's say it was right here. All right, negative 0.2. Then what's going to happen? Then the ellipse will look like this, right? So now how many points are there going to be? Well, there's going to be two points along the x-axis. And what? Two points along the y-axis, right? So if your charge distribution is such that one of the charges is maybe close to the x-axis, the, I mean the y-axis, then the ellipse will include the y-axis. So then how would we get the answer in that case? Let's just, let's just do that case. How would we get the points here? How would we get that point? Because I might give you that kind of a charge distribution on the test, where maybe one of them is close to the y-axis, and I ask, find the points where the potential is zero along the x and y. So you should know how to do the y. Well, then you just do this distance, OK? It's uh, going to be y squared plus uh, 1 squared, right? So it's going to be 0.2. You don't even need the 0.2 because they're both point. Uh, so you can just say 2 divided by y squared plus 1 squared square root is equal to uh, 5 divided by square root of y squared plus 4 squared. That's how you would find the point along the y-axis. You see? 2 over square root of y squared plus 1 squared equals 5 over. So if they're equal, then they, the, this one will match that one. So again, you cross multiply and square them. You get 4 times y squared plus 16 is equal to 25 times y squared plus 1. And you get uh, 64 minus, and this one goes to the other side, 25, is equal to 25 minus uh, 4, which is 21. All right? So you have... Uh, uh, 39 divided by 21. So y is going to give you plus or minus square root of that, which is, it's, that explains the two points. You see, it's part of an ellipse. Perfect. So that's those two points, you see? That's how it works. Okay, good. So next question, what is the total potential at 1,5 meters? 